Gate Performance Sports Sedan cars are out on track now, making their way around on their warm-up lap. And, Gaz, there's been a little bit of controversy. Uh, you've just been down in the paddock area well, drama. catching up with everyone. I'd call it drama. Uh, unfortunately, our pole sitter, Thomas Randall's out of this race, at least possibly out for the whole weekend. Drive shaft on the oil pump and power steering failed. And uh, that's not an easy fix on one of these sorts of cars. So we'll have Tony Riccadello on his own for this rolling start of this, the first race of round two of the DEA Sports Sedan title or national series. What it does do is it leaves the spot right in front of Jordan Caruso and the Audi vacant, doesn't it? So he's got a clear look down on the inside run to, uh, to turn run there. So he'll be looking to make his very best sports sedan start, which he's only made three of in, in his uh, career so far. There's the car we're talking about, car number four, and there's number five. So number one, which is down in position yeah, seven. Yeah, drama's there the as well, I should mention too. They're down on power. They seem to fix the misfire they had in the car yesterday, but Stephen Tars Tomasi told me that they'll go out and do the warm-up lap. If it doesn't feel any better, they'll pull to the pits not good news either. Car number one trying to defend his title. Thomas Randall was to be on pole. That will not be filled that spot. Tony Riccadello will start out of P2. Jordan Caruso in the Auto Union Motorsport car. Miles Bond, great to see this car back up the front in the sports sedan racing. The Tonzi Cat crash repairs. Fuds Ford Escort. Shane Woodman in the BMW M3 GT3R at a Landau sign. The Riverside Racing. The field being rounded out by Anthony Cox and Michael Robinson. Colin Smith, uh, uh, Steve Tomasi, copying Rick Newman, Michael Robinson and Anthony Cox. Robbo didn't get out in qualifying, so I guess uh, rear of grid start. For uh, actually, he did. Both Anthony Cox and Michael Robinson got out, but they only went out right at one, the end of the session. Yeah, the one lap when it became dry. Cars making their way to the grid. We've got Showing two uh, X. Supercars in the field, uh, Simon Copping in the Perkins Engineering car and Rick Newman's car was originally a, a, a bat white motorsport uh, Falcon BA that uh, Max Wilson drove in uh, number 65 better electrical livery. Just noticing Stephen Tomasi has taken his spot in car number one, will be well, four good rows from the front row and we will see the Hyundai i30N. Actually, drive only, away for a rolling start. The only uh, change they've made to Riccadillo's car is they've stiffened the front spoiler, the front splitter. It was flapping around a little bit, so they put a piece of little aluminium underneath it to just stiffen it up a little bit. It was flexing a little bit. I think that had a lot to do with the wind that's out there at the moment as well. Might have a lot to do with the 270 kilometres an hour that uh, they start to buffer around. Actually, had a good chat with... Tony, Tony this morning and the advances since this car was built. It's, it's a generation older than the Saab that was to be on pole, than the Audi in the next row and then the BMW on the next row. It, it really is one of the, the older cars competing at the front of the DEA Performance National Sports and Dance Field. So Uh, Tony was just having a chat to us about the, the way the aero works. Uh, plenty of socials going on with the Shannon's Nationals. Check it out at hashtag Shannon's SN19. Yeah, Uwood Sweat uh, from Formula 4 AU. Obviously, that was posted a little while ago because it's quite dry now. Was wet when those guys went out for their qualifying session. Shane Van Gisbergen driving the Trofeo Motorsport Lamborghini here this weekend. Some big names in the Australian GT race this afternoon. Garth Tander of course there with Jeff Emery. Shane Van Gisbergen with Liam Talbot. This is uh, where some of the uh, crew are staying. Here's some, a little bit of angst around the back of the track here at the go-karts yesterday. So uh, a lot of our races of course uh, getting out there to warm up. That's where they've come from and a lot of the top line races still go go-karting midweek just to keep themselves uh, dialed right in. There's that Lamborghini we were talking about of Shane Van Gisbergen making its way down in the very damp qualifying session for the Australian GT Championship and the CAMS Australian Endurance Championship running uh, alongside each other this weekend. The race, of course, this afternoon. The GTs will be out on track and looking forward to seeing how that race plays out starting at about 
this afternoon. So, uh, lots going on there with the Australian GT. Hashtag Australian GT. And there's lots going on in the social side of things here at the Bend Motorsport Park, Maryland Life in photos there. Here's all of our uh, all of our uh, socials details for your Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Plenty to do down there in the visitor centre. The big bangers, the gods of thunder, the DEA performance, national sports sedans. There's the Michael Robinson from Bell Real Estate up in the Dandenong Ranges in Melbourne. We form the cars up. I just see a wiper going there, yeah. and I'm just thinking, whoa, the rain has come back. Uh, we had a very dry, sunny period there for a while, but certainly now it's uh, starting to change and all these guys will be out on slick tyres for this as well. The most experienced of them right at the very front of the field there, Tony Riccadello. He, he has got rain on his screen. You watch him in the first two laps, he will be absolutely blistering, trying to get his way as fast as he can. The Hyundai i30, almost gazumped by these cars, isn't it? Magnificent road car, magnificent safety car here this weekend. Let's hope we don't see it. We don't want to see an ANCAP safety car feel, um, visit, but that is uh, definitely filling the screens of the camera down there at the bottom end of the track. They've still got to come all the way back around this uh, left-hander, but, yep, it's wet. Oh, that's it's going to be very interesting to see how this plays out. I would be surprised if we saw a number of cars come to the lane. Well, they don't they're have all on air jacks either, so there's uh, always that problem of changing four tyres. So you're going to lose laps if you do come in. So you've got to gauge that about it. But as we talk, they're ready to go, and away they go. Tony Riccadello gets away absolutely beautiful. Jordan Caruso hasn't experienced this before. As we see Stephen Tomasi coming, charging through the field in car number one. The more experienced guys starting to come through here, guys. Shane Bradford, look at that in the Hot Wheels car, or the Aston air conditioning car. He comes through, and we've got one speared off. Who was that? It's Riccadello. Tony Riccadello. Car number five, ten times champion, comes back on, and doesn't lose the spot. Uh, you might, well, well, you can't, you can't redress in this category either, so at the moment it's uh, Shane Woodman who leads the way in the BMW, so this will be interesting. Of course, he's still learning how to use the paddle shift in that car, so whether he can master it with the wheel slip that they're going to have and the tyre uh, on the sick tyre is going to be interesting, but there we have Cole Smith and Anthony Cox, the two Queenslanders that are running here this weekend back in the mid-pack at the moment. Simon Copping in the uh, supercar, Perkins Engineer car just ahead of him, and Rick Newman, of course, as we said, in a number of the ex-supercars. A little bit modified from its supercar days, but uh, those two will be battling for honours in their respective, because they're not uh, space frame cars, they'll be battling it out there as well. This is not ideal. The cars have gone out in dry conditions. You've had a, a, an absolute soaking in the last 40 or 50 seconds or so since the start of this race, and these cars are very, very sensitive. Big, big slick tyres on them. This part of the track doesn't look to have had uh, as much of a downfall on it as Tony Riccadello is not hanging around. He's going to challenge back for that spot there. Shane Woodman in the number 16 leading the way. Very gingerly, big understeer there. Bit of water coming across the track there, so the track has had an absolute dousing. That was very quick, wasn't it? It just sort of come in so fast. Five minutes before they went out, it was bright sunshine and not a cloud to be seen in, in the direction of Weber, of course. But this one slipped under our guard and obviously slipped under the guard of these guys running out here at the moment. They've got uh, nine laps to negotiate. It'll be eight at the end of this one. And then we see a change for lead as we see Riccadillo go through to take over the front running. It's really not a good display of sports sedans, is it, when it's like this? I guess the skill is to try and just keep it on the uh, on the track at this point in time. Well, the only one to slip up is the guys out in front. Here he comes onto the straight, and even there it's very slippery. You see he had to have two bites to get the car around the corner, straighten it up and head down the straight to finish the first lap. So there's a fair bit happened of only one lap in. One lap in, even the, uh, the formation lap was a little bit hairy there, but... Tony Riccadello, that experience coming to the fore. The SR20 turbocharged car of Miles Bond. So that's a four-cylinder turbocharged car really coming on nicely. Must be a very well-tuned turbo car because they can be quite peaky there. Almost looks like a bus driver up on the wheel there, doesn't he? Very close to the wheel. Shane Woodman now, you get the feeling that he's uh, feeling a little bit uncomfortable in the seat at this point in time in the Landells Riverside Racing BMW. And he's going to lose second spot here to Bond, who... You can see straight away, as soon as you put your foot on the 
down on the right-hand pedal, it immediately breaks into wheel spin and loses traction. Good to see Fudds jumping on board with Miles Bond here this weekend. Let's hope that uh, Miles can get some funding and start doing more of the national championship. The car is an absolute magic piece of work and great to see it back out on track. It was, of course, the Motorosos all those years ago when Bob Jolly was running strong. This car was an absolute weapon with a Chev in it. Now running the turbocharged four-cylinder. There's Carl One fighting back at the moment. Steve Tomasi back there in fourth place. Oh, we're just we're just hearing that this car, our race leader Tony Riccadello, is getting a drive through. For, uh, Normally it's been, the a, been an add-on, but they've uh, issued a drive through, so that'll drop him back to the tail of the field. You would expect. Yeah, certainly a bit of a trundle down the pit lane here. That won't. Uh, yeah, gee, what, what was Tony supposed to have done at that point, Gary? Yeah, I don't know. That, that's a strange one, isn't it? Yeah, he didn't, as though he didn't retain the lead because thought, Shane Woodman went through to lead. Do I dare bring up Scott McLaughlin and Winton for the no, supercar no. round? Don't, don't mention that one. No, that was, I thought he was okay then. <laughs> uh, just running back down the order, of course, uh, behind Tomasi, we've got Caruso, Copping, Newman, Smith, Cox, Robertson, and Shane Bradford. Obviously had a moment somewhere we didn't... Well, we did see him get in the strike down at Turn 1, uh, managed to get it back, but he's at the back of the field now. And sure. you can see Tomasi now under all sorts of uh, drama coming from Caruso. Now, the thing is, if Tomasi's still down on power, that would probably suit better in these conditions because you're not going to get the wheel spin and a car with less power actually tracks better than one with too much power. And maybe a little bit of an engine miss could act sort of a little bit like a traction control system <laughs> there, but he wouldn't be getting that high in the revs now that even the engine miss would be evident to him. At the moment, he's just its fingers and toes and it's delicately finding a way around. Having said that, right about now, it'll be pedal to the metal and deal with the, the wheel spin as you come across it. But Stephen Tomasi driving away from Jordan Cox in the John Gawley Audi. Now you might have seen very briefly, because they've got digital flags here as well, there was a black flag for car five, and uh, Riccadillo continued on, so he may not have radio comms, so he would not know about it until he's crossed the start finish line, so you'd expect him in on the next lap, which means that he has to really come from uh, well back, and at the moment, the gap between first and 11th is something over 30 seconds, so actually it's... We haven't got Bradford, uh, Newman's dropped to the back now, so he's had a drama. 34 seconds back to P10, so that would bring him out about where Bradford is on the track at the moment. The interesting thing is that Tony Riccadello this weekend and quite often has Les Small in his corner, a guy who won Bathurst, uh, I guess the last privateer to win Bathurst with Alan Grice at the wheel of the Chickadee Commodore. So Les Small's in the garage with uh, Tony Riccadello this weekend and I dare say he'll be on the radio and Les would be uh, continuing a conversation with the officials about now. There's Rick, Rick Newman in the New Line Homes entry. That's a shame. This car would have been on wet. Probably one of the better cars set up wise. You would think so, but he'd be on slicks at the moment. Yeah, everyone's on slicks. Here's our current race leader who does have a, uh, a, a penalty hanging over his head. Got a couple of corners before he gets around. Oh, and goes off. Big no. splash through the puddles there. So I would suggest that Tony Riccadello knows he's got the drive through. He's got three laps to, in the rules to come in and do that. So what he's trying to do is skate away and try and open up the gap as much as he possibly can. Nine seconds he as leaves just, at the moment. Just watching the escort drop down the no, time No, timing's got a problem with Riccadello's transponder by the look of it. Yeah, but, uh, Riccadello is definitely leading at this stage. Here he comes down to what will be the completion of lap three. And therefore, one would suggest that once he finishes this lap off, he will come into the pits. Coming through what I imagine at the moment is turn 18 onto the straight, and he should peel off to pit lane, and he does so. The other thing he's got to be careful of is to maintain a 40-kilometre speed limit. In one of these cars, that would not be easy. It's very hard. It's a long way off the cam, isn't it? It's certainly <laughs> difficult just to trundle down pit lane. Now let's see, we've got Miles Bond across the line Shane Woodman across the line Sleeper Tomasi Certainly the uh, 6 litre V8s have got more straight line poke, but they don't track as well as a lighter, where I imagined it would be the lighter Escort Remember back in the day when this had a Chev in it, the Escort I'm talking about it was a ballistic starter It would uh, 
get past everything on the run to the first quarter, and then they'd all round him up within a couple of laps. Oh, Miles Bond there, massive big handful, those huge slick tyres just offering up no grip whatsoever. The back of the Tomasi car, Gaz, which we know they've got issues with that car, but famously large horsepower out of that Calibra. The, uh, the Tomasi's all love to have win that horsepower race. They've had uh, many years of pushing very, very hard. We noticed it at places like Eastern Creek or Sydney Motorsport Park that in a straight line it gave nothing away to the Audi as far as straight line's performance went. There, there was one particular uh, Muscle Car Masters event there which uh, has still been clouded in controversy to this day but that thing was very, very quick down the straight that weekend. Here's our race leader now, Shane Woodman, who hasn't won a race in the National Sports and Ant Series but uh, maybe with uh, six laps left in this race, the number 16. Here comes Tomasi and here comes Jordan Caruso. And certainly, the dry, it's, it's drying. It would be horrendously greasy with the Hankook slicks that they've got on these cars. But uh, starting to dry, and that's where you're starting to see Steve Tomasi monstering the back of Miles Bond. This is a good battle between the four, and incidentally, Riccadello rejoined in position 10. He's 36 seconds off the lead. And he's got, well, the best part of six laps, almost seven laps to try and get that back before the end of the race. And uh, we know he'll probably be a little bit quicker than these guys. And we can see Woodman actually pulling a little bit clear of this battle for second between uh, Bond, Caruso and, uh, and Tomasi, who's in there as well in between them and now under threat from Caruso. Oh, Steve Tomasi just getting squirrely there as he tries to put the power down in car number one, the Domain Prestige Homes Calibra. And right behind Jordan Caruso having exactly the same problem. It's uh, It'd be like a, a Great Dane on a shiny lino <laughs> floor, <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't it, it? Running yeah. around, just trying to keep keep themselves uh, upright. Would a, bit be. Of, a bit of water, a bit of... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Bit of dishwashing liquid. <laughs> Not funny. All arms and legs. Not funny, absolutely. <laughs> like a baby giraffe, just uh, yeah. all legs trying to stand up at the moment. It's Shane Woodman leading the way in the DEA Performance Sports Sedans. Down the inside goes car number one. This is where Miles Bond gave up the lead of the race the last lap around. And Tomasi being given plenty of room, very, very gentlemanly oh, yeah, by, three wide. by uh, Woodman. Three wide out of that corner as well. And Tomasi gets them both eventually and goes to the lead. Good driving there by Stephen Tomasi. He's waited for his moment, but gets pushed yet. out wide. Now they're three wide through the very, very fast turn five. Woodman gets back in there. The car one is gets left out there a little bit, and the FUD-sponsored escort hung out to dry. So ultimately that shakes out, Gary, in that Tomasi is trying to have a look down the inside at turn six, the very slow hairpin in a sports sedan grip limited in it's these conditions. Simon Copping's caught up to him as well in the expert contingenteering VZ Commodore. So he's actually gone around Caruso. He's picked up a spot. His car would probably be the best set up for these sorts of conditions. Particularly this uh, next supercar would be, would be pretty handy in these conditions. But Shane Woodman is back at the lead here, but you get the feeling that Stephen Tomas is starting to feel the car come back to him. As uh, we haven't had another downpour since the start of this race. There's some drying parts of the track which can be very very tricky to control and Stephen is now basically a veteran of, uh, of national sports at Ayers. But from a driver's aspect there's a couple of corners here one of them actually opens up on the exit and the other one tightens up on the exit but you're never sure which corner you're at because there's 18 turns here and you've got two of them so similar to go into and all of a sudden you go on the exit and all of a sudden you're thinking oh, I can gas down here and I'm thinking wait a minute this really tightens up we believe that that's uh, going to be called short this race as well we're coming up to complete lap four and there'll be one after that at the moment Riccadello trails by 32 seconds on our race leader who's still under lots of pressure here from Tomasi the pair of them just drawing a little bit clear of the opposition behind and now Tomasi goes for a look down the inside at turn 17 and gets all sorts of wheel spin <laughs> on the exit because he went the short line. In the meantime, Copping goes to third ahead of Bond. But will he have the straight line speed to stay ahead of the turbocharged Nissan powered Escort? Looks like he will. And he's actually got performance on Woodman as well. 
Yeah, so we hopping cars coming into uh, into its performance zone, isn't it? Uh, Tomasi now out in front, Gaz. I don't expect to see that uh, Stephen Tomasi will be headed again. Certainly, uh, the big mover is copping. Jordan Caruso has played a very, very sensible race here. He hasn't put his nose in somewhere to get himself in strife. He's done all of his braking in a straight line. No point trail braking and trying to turn in in the wet. No point trying to go down through the gearbox when you're apexing a corner in the wet. And generally in a sports sedan, you're going through a corner maybe a gear higher than what you were previously. So you don't get that wheel spin that on wheel exit. Spin, yeah, so they, they do have plenty of horsepower. And it's copying a front-running car has to have 750, but to be right out in front now, they're, they're quoting 780 horsepower. Big move there for the number 11. Once upon a time, people skited about horsepower. Now they get very conservative when you ask them. The yeah, they, they, they keep it very guarded. I've spoken <laughs> to just about all the uh, front-running yeah. sports sedans, and none of them wanted to talk about horsepower anymore. Now Simon copping up to second position in this race. It's been a brilliant drive. A ripping drive. He's back on about P8, I think, yeah. qualifying. Yeah, a ripping drive there for copping. He's, uh, you get the feeling that if this has had it gone the actual uh, race distance, that he might be able to take it to Tomasi. But I think uh, Stephen has taken car one to the lead of this race and he's not going to be fronted again in the, uh, the rest of this lap, under half a lap left to go now. Well, I you was know, talking to Steve before the race and he said we've had just everything go wrong this weekend and what a way to salvage it to win the first race of the weekend and put your whole championship back on track, as it were. You think it's hard to win a championship, try and go back to back with it. It's a tough old ask. Jordan Caruso now the in, down the inside of the 17, the FUDS escort of Miles Bond. Just gingerly gets through there. As I said, he's not putting the car or himself in any jeopardy whatsoever. Stephen Tomasi has driven a pretty strong race here. He's just let the track come back to him. And uh, getting out of that corner has been tricky for all of them this race long. They'll have earned their uh, rest at the end of this one, Gaz. <laughs> yeah, it's been hard work. Coming out on the straight for the last time. Check it, flag out. Steve Tomasi. The national sports sedan champion from 2018 takes the first race of round two. Gets to the line ahead of Shane Woodman in second. No, that's uh, Simon Copping in second spot. Shane Woodman in third. And Miles Bond salvages fourth just ahead of Jordan Caruso. His Tony Riccadello coming out on the straight. He'll get position six out of this. So it hasn't been all too bad, but a bait breaks his winning sequence having won the first three races of round one to go down to six in race two. There's our race winner, Stephen Tomasi in the Calibra Chev. And results should be up with you. There they are, Tomasi first, Woodman in second, Copping third, Miles Caruso, Riccadello, Shane Bradford, who we've seen down the back of the field, got himself back up to seven, Colin Smith and eight, Van Vinny Cox ninth, Michael Robinson, who we know doesn't like the wet, just stayed out of trouble and finished in 10th. Gee, the interesting thing out of this, Gaz, is that they've come into this round with 11 points between them. Here's the start of the race. It bucketed down. They went out on their formation lap in dry conditions. Bradford slid into turn number one there, and this is where we found it, that Tony Riccadello had gone to the grass and ultimately was what made him come in up the inside there in number five. Rick Gavis the lead at this point, but... He did have a drive through penalty hanging over his head. And then we had this great dice a second between Miles Bond in the turbocharged four-cylinder car up against the six-liter Chev V8. Shane Woodman showing great skill behind the wheel to keep uh, things at bay there. Rick Newman, just a little indiscretion. In fact, I don't think I've ever seen Rick exit the track there. So a little indiscretion in that car. This was the drive through penalty for car number five. Tony Riccadello straight into the lane. Lots of swaps for the lead here. This was a big bit of performance pressure that Tomasi put on Woodman. And all three of them went side by side just before the entry to two. Tomasi got through. But uh, ultimately, it was there that he made the move stick. And this is where they both squirreled side by side with each other. And was in the background corner. coming, copping in the... Uh, the last car. corner, he got the lead. And a couple laps later, here he goes. Just down to get the chequered flag to take the opening race of round two here at the bend. Should be up with you. There they are. Tabasi first. Woodman in second. Copping third. Miles Russo. Riccadello. Shane Bradford, who we've seen down the back of the field, got himself back up to seven. Colin Smith and eight. Van Vinny Cox ninth. Michael Robinson, who we know doesn't like the wet, just stayed out of trouble and finished in tenth.